Kia ora and tolofalava. Welcome to our cup of tea with we today. Um, we were talking with Jackie Curry from Specific Consulting. So welcome, Jackie. <laughs> tolofalava, Wendy. <laughs> it's really well. it's really good to have you on board today. We've got quite the history together. <laughs> yes, definitely. Been through a lot together, especially the last five years in particular. So, yes, yeah, so great and to I, be on the show. And, 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 a, and with a whole lot of secrets that we won't share today, but we will definitely get into some <laughs> <laughs> into some stories and some lessons learned. Yes, definitely. Awesome. And maybe we should even start off with... Uh, a whole year that we spent together at Leadership mm -hmm. New Zealand, um, which was definitely, uh, I know, a turning point in my life. I'm not sure um, with yours, but I know that after LNZ, you made some pretty big decisions. So, yeah, maybe um, without giving away, because we can't give away everything in Leadership <laughs> New Zealand. But, yeah, what, what are some of the things, I guess, that you took from Leadership New Zealand that got you thinking about business or how you might do business differently and some of the decisions that you made that really made an impact and, yeah, and where you took your business? Yeah, well, um, like Wendy was saying, we did LNZ in 2015. So I'm a very proud um, alumni of Leadership, Leadership New Zealand, uh, LNZ, and um, can't, can't recommend it enough to anyone that's ever considered doing any kind of personal development. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, so that was a pretty crazy year. Um, and as Wendy said, you know, the beauty of LNZ is that you can go through all these experiences with your people, but you know, um, we don't share too much detail about what we went through because then it's <laughs> <laughs> a safe space. Um, yes. It's so important, especially when you're a business owner or a CEO or, you know, uh, someone in a leadership position uh, that really, wants to be have a space to be open to share. But anyhow, so yeah, so I made um, the crazy decision in 2015. Um, I, I remember it was when we were actually down, um, where's that spot down in um, near Christchurch we went to the- Hamner Springs? Hamner Springs, yes. So that trip we went, did to Hamner Springs, um was a i guess what you call a defining moment um for me just realizing um you know really having this deep desire to go back home to samoa and just knowing that um there was something that was pulling me back there a lot of the stuff that happened in that year of leadership new zealand just started to redirect my i guess vision and purpose back towards samoa mm -hmm. and um yeah and so out of everyone in our year, I think what was our um, motto uh, in that year was fearless leadership. Fearless leadership. <laughs> and oh my gosh, like I literally just jumped off the edge of the cliff <laughs> and um, resigned from my job. I had a really um, awesome job at Pacific Business Trust at the time. And I had my business here in New Zealand, um, which at the time was called Business Specific. And yeah, just made this crazy decision that, hey, I'm going to go home and um make an impact i guess you know sounds cliche but that was um that was how how much alan Z or leadership new zealand impacted me and and really like it was really about defining my purpose and mm -hmm. fearless was about like if not I, I remember there was a saying that um one of our awesome speakers said about if not you then who mm -hmm. so you know you always um you know, people will always sit on the sidelines and say, oh, somebody should do this, somebody should do that. So what I learned from Leadership New Zealand was um, sometimes you actually need to look in the mirror and say if you're so passionate about something and you even better if you have the skills to do it and just say, you know, why not me? Why? Who says I'm not that person? Mm. So, yeah, so that 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 took me back home and um yeah, to this day, my heart is still in Samoa and still got big plans there. And um, just so excited that We Accounting is in Samoa now. Because, <laughs> you know, when I um, managed to bring uh, my plan that I'm still working on, uh, which will be revealed all in good time, um, 
into fruition. I'm just so glad to have my friends from We Accounting that are going to that are there on the ground. So you know, um, yeah. So that was basically the crazy thing that I did in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> and, and may I say that was also a time of really plunging into business. I had already been in business for five years, um, running business specific, which is a training um, business. And, um, you know, as you know, I was delivering programs at the time for Pacific Business Trust in Tijuana, Aotearoa, teaching their business programs. But in saying that, it was quite a safe business because it was a contract business. So, you know, I had contracts rolling over every year. So, you know, um, it wasn't as stable as a job. Um, but I always knew that, you know, I was assured of income. So going to Samoa, oh my gosh, it was like um, not the first time I'd started a business from scratch because I had started businesses from scratch before. But not only was I starting a business from scratch, it was the first of its kind in Samoa. Um, it was, um, I decided to go into digital marketing, which was a huge gap in the mm. market in Samoa at the time. There was nobody at the time that was kind of like doing um, Facebook and um, social media professionally. So because my my undergrad degree was in marketing and I'd been a, a marketing lecturer in, my, in a previous life in Samoa, um, I decided, why don't I start a marketing agency? <laughs> so it was really like kind of crazy times. It wasn't like my my main reason to go back to Samoa because there was there was other things that I was trying to do there. Um, but I, I just thought, well, I'll just start with something I know and um, and build up a business from there. So yeah, and it was um, a very interesting experience being the first <laughs> in the market. Because guess what? Nobody really got what I did, <laughs> let alone was willing to pay for it <laughs> in, in a way that would actually pay my bills. So that was an experience mm -hmm. too. But um, huge, huge learning curve because I had been teaching business, mentoring business for so many years before that. This was actually um, one of the first times I really took that plunge to actually be on the other side and start a business so that was um was a bit of a change so by at that time i'd been in business for five years like i said and mm -hmm. then 2016 i launched specific marketing in samoa that was my sixth year of business and just like totally left all my the comfort of my contracts and my job in new zealand as i mentioned to start this business from scratch with very little startup capital and you know even though i was going back home to samoa um i must admit one thing i really underestimated was not having my parents there um mm. and can i say that pretty much all my foundation of my business life um, like wendy mentioned in the post i grew up in a business family so i've lived and breathed business from literally almost since i was born <laughs> <laughs> my grandparents owned businesses in Samoa when I first went there when I was one years old. I remember running around in a soft drink factory and then they owned an accommodation business, which my dad eventually took over. And um, and I ended up managing as well um, in Samoa um, at, at, at one point in my life. So my mom owned, a, my mom was an accountant and um, she still is. And they also owned a clothing shop where they imported clothes from LA. So I well and truly was entrenched in business in Samoa. And um, I was very naive to think that that was enough. Because <laughs> when I went home and did it on my own, it was definitely um, a very different experience than when my parents were there to kind of like mm -hmm. mentor me and, and, and help me with, with, the, with the startup phase of my business. So, but anyway, hey, it's always good to just throw yourself in the deep end. And, um, you know, um, nothing is ever a failure. It's a learning experience. And, um, yeah, and then came back to New Zealand in 2018 um, as my kids were schooling here. So I missed them so much and they didn't want to move to Samoa. So <laughs> the mother grew, but moved back to where her kids are. So that's, yeah. that's me and I'm back in New Zealand now. So anyway, that's cool. I'll leave it at that. And then yeah, back to you, my dear. <laughs> 
So you talked a bit about your parents and mm -hmm. um, how they were in business. What was maybe like the biggest lesson that you learnt from them observing, watching, being part of the businesses that they were running? Mm. Well, what I learned was um, business at the end of the day, um, it doesn't matter what you're selling, business, products, services, um, the name of the game is survival. Yeah. And um, my, my parents own multiple businesses, which I now understand why is because in a small <laughs> market like Samoa, you can't really depend on one business income because if one business is um, slow for whatever reason, for example, we're in the tourism industry for like 30 years, but you know, um, so many things, uh, I mean, look at what's happening now with COVID, you know, so many things can happen that are out of your control. So they always had multiple businesses, multiple income streams and that's one thing that i teach my kids um mm. as well is and talk to them about is don't ever depend on like one pay packet or one business whatever they do in life always have mm. multiple income streams that's one lesson they taught me that's a good lesson yeah but if i can say probably the most valuable lesson i learned from them was really how to get by in the tough times, I saw my parents um, go through, you know, on the on the surface of any business, um, people assume everything's all good. As long as you stay in business, you must be successful and you must be rich and have heaps of money if you're <laughs> operating a business for like 20 plus years. But what I really learned was it's really about cash flow. And um, there are times when the cash flow is really good. And that was when um, my mom, who, of course, being the accountant, was the finance person, was able to clear all the bills and keep keep um, everyone's head above water. But, man, the times when cash flow was was down, oh, my gosh, you know, the things my parents had to do <laughs> mm. to get by. But they really taught me that there's always a way. And, and, I, and I impart yeah. that when I talk to other business people going through stuff. Um, they really taught me. Like, you know, don't, just never give up. And you literally have to have a mind that is so creative that you can think about how to move certain things around. And that's where the multiple income streams really comes in. It's during those tough times and, and move things around just to keep things going enough until you get, get back on your feet and get back to a good season in business. So, mm -hmm. um, and I lived and breathed those experiences and, um, very stressful times and, you know, I have so much respect for my parents because I saw, you know, all the ups and downs and the stress that they went through. Mm. Um, and really, like, for them, running the businesses back home in Samoa was all about, was really about us, about our family, about, you know, having the house that they always wanted, educating their kids well. And, um, you know, they did what they knew best was business because they – also um, grew up with business parents or came from business families themselves. So they really knew mm. how, I guess, it all worked. But, you know, but it's still hard. I mean, you can grow up in a business family and know the all the basics and all the different tricks to the trade. But, you know, you still go through your tough times. Um, mm. Despite everything your parents have told you, it's like so <laughs> The struggle is real, as they say. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the same when you grow up as a teenager. You try to tell your teenager and give them all of the tips and all those sorts of things, but they're still going to face their own challenges. And sometimes you have to because you need to learn the lessons that come with them. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's tough. But on the other side, uh, wins. That's what Christian said last week. <laughs> On the other side of Challenger wins. So tell us, so you've talked about your parents and how influential they've been. Have there been other people um, that have helped you in your business? Um, yeah, I guess um, along the way I've had a lot of, um, I've been really blessed to have a lot of, um, call them like business colleagues, friends that I've met in business. I'm talking to one right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people like yourselves um, and, you know, other business colleagues that um, I guess have given me other other um, tools, I'll call them, or skills, or just even 
motivation and inspiration in business um, mm. to really keep going in this time and age because, you know, my parents run, ran a business in a different time. Um, you know, mm. they had their own set of challenges and, and, and ways of doing things back then. But, you know, we're in a different time now and we have different challenges. I mean, look what's happening right now with COVID mm -hmm. again. So this is now what we have to face and they never went through this. So, you know, um, so yeah, so I guess um, I just really lean on um, business colleagues that I really trust. I think um, that's probably what I've learned over the years is um, trust is probably the hardest thing to find in business. Um, it's way <laughs> easier, way easier when you have a job because yeah. you represent an organization and you have the the banner of that organization to back you, especially if you work for like a government agency or a, a big business. Um, in a previous life, I, I worked for a big multinational company and, you know, you just get all this certain accolades and, um, I guess, I don't know, status that goes with that, that allows you to open a lot of doors. But when you are the business owner, when you are the CEO, when you are the, the cleaner at the same time and the person that has to make the sale, deliver the service, send out the invoice, you know, and um, yeah, it's, it's just so different. You just don't get that same, um, you know, the doors are not as wide open. So mm -hmm. what I found as a as a small business owner is, um, man, you have to work so much harder, and you have to really believe in yourself mm -hmm. more than what you would have to in a job. Because in a job, you can rely on your manager to give you motivation. You can go yeah. and complain to them if you're not happy with stuff. But guess what? When you're a business owner, <laughs> you just have to get up and look in the mirror, or look at the Zoom every day, and um, carry yourself well and um, Going back to who has helped me, it's really been my my close business friends, um, and I say business friends because, and this is I guess you know one bit of advice that I'll I'll give to anyone thinking of going into business is you know, it's very important when you're in business to to know who to associate with um, when it comes to business. Um, your personal friends, your social friends, say your school friends, your university friends, the people you socialize with, are not always the best people to talk and open up and share about your business experiences. It's almost like if you don't have a set of friends like that already that are in business, um, I'd actually recommend that you find some, you know, and you can do that through networking. I mean, Wendy, Ali, and I met at a Samo Business Network um, event. Mm -hmm a few years back yeah. and that started our friendship and you know i, I i've met a lot of re people i'm very i would say i'm very close to now as business friends and colleagues that i met through you know business channels and, and different things but um those are the people that you turn to with your challenges that you can trust um that you can get inspiration from and i guess they just get it you know what they I mean? understand yeah, they've been yeah. there <laughs> they know yeah. how hard it is and and not just that but you know if you open up to your other friends that are maybe not in business at or especially operating a business at this time they may just say to you why don't you just go and get a job you know you have so much less stress in your life <laughs> <laughs> you know i've had a few people say that to me and um, to be honest, I've tried a few times. There's been a few times when I've been like, especially when I don't have any contracts that, um, that you know, that are solid, that I can depend on. I always have that thought in the back of my head. Maybe I should go back and get a job. And there, there has been times when I have, have tried to seek out um, certain jobs. But, you know, um, there's just something about being in business. You know, it, it's something in your blood or in your... DNA. Woke up, yeah. <laughs> that you know, you might, you may go back to a job for a short period of time, but trust me, I've, I've done it so many times. Like, I think the longest time I've had an actual job was four years. That was my record. <laughs> um, Most jobs I've only ever had for less, uh, say, over a year, but always like one to two years. There's just something. It's very hard for me to get to that two year mark and. 
the only reason I stayed in one of my jobs for four years was because um, I was a lecturer at the National University and it was so flexible as long as I taught my classes and, you know, um, I was able to, to at the time run one of a business I owned and my parents' business. So, yeah, it's like, you know, if you're built for business, you don't have to apologize for that or feel like you have to explain yourself to people. Just keep on keeping on and, you know, also don't be ashamed for the times when mm -hmm. things are not going so well and you might have to get a job or contracts or things to tie you over. There's no shame in that. Um, but just know that you'll always come back, you know, and mm -hmm. you just you just got to kind of keep your business going, even if you have to downsize it to just you. You're the only employee. And I have done that. Um, when I got back from Samoa, I had to do that and just, you know, take a step back and look at, you know, what now, what next. Mm. And, um, yeah, but as long as you just keep your business alive, um, even if you're not trading, um, you know, you'll get through. And, hey, um, I was sharing with Wendy tonight. I don't think about it often, but um, actually about to have, you know, my 10th year anniversary of specific. <laughs> so I know, and it's just like, because it's my own business, I just, I just, I don't know, year by year, it's just about, you know, what am I doing this year? What are my contracts? What am I focusing on? Um, but that's how, literally how I've managed to get this far in business is just, you know, going through those different stages and downsizing if you need to, Hiring staff when you need to, being brave enough to let go of staff when you don't need them or if they're um, they're not well suited for your business. So anyway, that's just a little bit about my very interesting uh, business journey. <laughs> up and down. <laughs> I think we need to celebrate your ten years. <laughs> I Yay! remember, I remember when Ellie and I had our first year. And I think we just went out. Oh, no, it was just our first Christmas party. And I was very pregnant with Blake. And mm. um, we literally just went out for dinner and went, yeah. yay, happy Christmas yeah. to us. Yeah. <laughs> got to do that. You've got to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk, let's talk about one of the biggest obstacles that you've faced in your business. I know that you've had... Um, interesting challenges uh, mm -hmm. and I know one of the challenges that we were talking about before is something that so many business owners get into and they mm -hmm. just think that everything's going to be dandy um, no I don't mm -hmm. have to worry uh, and then oh shit it's the fan and yeah. <laughs> uh, oh okay, maybe I wasn't quite right so tell us tell us about one of your challenges that you've faced in business yeah, well, definitely my biggest challenge was, um, so I, uh, when I first started business, I had two other business partners. So um, the original business was called Business Specific, and this is when I got into the training contracts. Mm -hmm. So it all started out well. It was, you know, together with two colleagues who I worked really well with when I, when we were working, when we had jobs in an organization. So we worked really well together and we all, I guess, respected each other's um, skills and talent in um, delivering business programs. So anyway, so we started a company and um, yeah, that was, I guess, the start. It was very, um, how can I say, it wasn't like a, a huge thing or a big party when I, we started the business. It was literally just kind of like what had to happen at the time because at, at that particular time, um, I was made redundant from my role. Um, at that particular organization. And yeah, it was just like, hey, should we get some business contracts together and start a company and deliver some classes? So it's just kind of like, okay. Um, but yeah, but there, um, I've, I have really learned and I was sharing with Wendy earlier about um, business partnerships. Now, fast forward to um, three years later, um, I think it was three, three or four years. Um, yeah, we got in, um, serious trouble and i was selling wendy i haven't shared this openly let alone on facebook live um, <laughs> we, um, i had entrusted one of the business partners to look after the books 
um, and keep make sure that, you know, GST returns and tax returns and all that were filed. So I trusted this person um, to do it. And um, anyway, for whatever reason, um, you know, they didn't fulfill that obligation. So, and it really put a strain on the business relationship um, and personal relationship we had. So anyway, we went and saw an accountant and this is when, you know, that's the times when you really love accountants. <laughs> that's the time you were like, accountants. Oh, come on. <laughs> Me. Um, so I'll never forget, um, went and saw um, someone who is now a really good friend, um, uh, Alex, from who at the time was running Breakthrough Accounting in Henderson. He was awesome. And um, yeah, I had to make the decision basically whether to shut down the company at that time and just cut our losses and split the, 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 the basically the tax debt that was there. Or um, do I continue the business and go go on it on my own and try and salvage? Um, you know, because there were still contracts in the business and we're still earning income. And to me, you know, on a personal level, I was really particular about my professional reputation. And um, to I I just knew that you know I, I know a lot of people come to a decision and I, I do know other people that have made decisions to to go into bankruptcy um, because of you know these kind of circumstances but I just I couldn't do it and um, to me I was like no I'm gonna front up and I'm gonna deal with this and um, yeah so anyway the other directors of the company um, pulled out the company and I was left as a sole director with a huge tax debt that wasn't just mine, but, um, and this is where understanding your obligations as well as a director of a company are so important. Yeah. Um, and just basically, I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew that once they exited the company and I allowed them to do that, that the tax was on my, was basically my responsibility. So anyhow, um, I... I managed to um, work with Alex and another accountant who specifically kind of like specialized in taxes and had previously worked at IRD and he was really awesome as well. Um, so yeah, so managed to negotiate a deal and and managed to to get out of that um, situation and and then got the business back into a state where you know we could operate again. Um, so it was a hugely challenging and um, I was saying to Wendy earlier, like definitely um, I do not estimate um, the mental and emotional um, stress that business owners go through when they go through that time. And I really have huge respect for Craig, Craig Hudson, at, um, who I know Wendy works closely with at um, Zero. Zero. Um, and the fact that he advocates for mental health of small business owners, because yeah. I tell you, it takes a huge toll on your health and even down to your physical health as well. Um, and, and again, you know, going back to my parents, I, I did see them go through huge stress um, in keeping their businesses afloat. So, you know, it's, it's really, really important. And what now, you know, um, 10 years into my business, one thing I, I definitely make sure of is taking care of my well-being, um, which I didn't do. I definitely didn't used to do in the past. That was all about, you know, doing everything for everyone else, my kids, keeping the business going. At the time, I had up to 100 students I would be looking after at any given time. I put them first as well. Um, so yeah, so now, um, what I've learned from that experience is that there's nothing more precious than your health and well being. Um, if you go through a challenging time and you get to the other side of it, um, yeah, health and well being as a small business owner is should be like your number one priority because it's very hard to make good, sound business decisions if you're not in a good state of mind and um, and healthy as well, and reasonably healthy. Um, and also it does impact um, your service delivery as well. 
if I can say, if if you as a business owner are not well, um, your staff feel it. If you have staff, um, your customers um, or clients, you know, it really impacts your business. So at the end of the day, it all comes back to you. You are the main asset of your business. That's what I've definitely learned. And so looking after yourself is so important. But yeah, I just wanted to share openly that experience, which this is definitely the first public forum where I've really shared that. And just <laughs> encourage anyone that might be going through that um, experience to not give up. And um, there's always ways to work things out, um, whether it's, you know, IRD or other creditors, you know, um, you don't have don't ever feel like you have to fold your business and give up. But again, mm. um, the best advisors during those times are your accountants, and they'll give you some really woohoo, <laughs> shout out for the accountants, <laughs> really realistic um, options. And, and that's what I love about accountants. They always give you options. So you, you, you can step back from there and make a decision on what's going to be best for you know, first and foremost, yourself and your family, your kids. If you have kids, obviously, it's, that's a very important big decision um, that you have to make. And, um, yeah, and just, and again, your well-being. Think about your well-being. And um, mm -hmm. I guess coming back to my business and why I just kept going, even when I guess I wasn't really making money in the business or even losing money, during, especially during that time, was I'm just so passionate about what I do um you know I was telling Wendy earlier like it's very hard for me to talk about my business because my business is basically helping business people um that's what I've I've done for how many years and I've kind of gone in between um jobs that where I'm able to do that I've had um I've done a lot of voluntary work which Wendy knows <laughs> um in in um different organizations i've been involved in especially samo business network um and then of course my own business and so um but in saying that one thing that i will say that i've also learned is um how important balance is mm -hmm. um ensuring that you it's so easy to and and i'll say this as a pacific wahine <laughs> tamaitai it's, you know, we're, we're literally brought up to serve, to, to give service to others, whether it's through church or whether it's through the community um, or your family. Um, but what I have learned in business um, is it's so important to make sure that your business doesn't drop in your priorities, in your priority list. Because at the end of the day, you can give so much of your time um, and help so many people on a voluntary basis um, mm -hmm. through community work. Um, but if you don't balance that out with ensuring that, you know, your business is earning income enough, especially for you to sustain yourself and your family, and then, of course, any staff that you have, then, you know, you really have to um, be brave enough to to step back from from those voluntary um commitments if you need to um which can be very very challenging <laughs> because when you really commit yourself to a cause it becomes like what you live and breathe and and i can i can attest to that and i understand but business um in business i guess the main outcome of business don't forget is to make a profit and so you know you you will have years where you might struggle, but um, at the end of the day, just don't take your eye off the prize that the outcome that you really want to get if you want your business to survive is mm. that, you know, you have to be earning more income <laughs> than your expenses, which equals profit. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah. And, and, yeah. And that also is about your well-being as well, not just money yeah. profit, but positive um Positive well-being as well is should be a very important on your list. And and when you overstretch yourself in voluntary commitments, again, it comes back to your well-being. And my sister here, Wendy, can attest to that. <laughs> she's, what she's been through in her personal journey with health and well-being. And yeah. Yeah. 
It's it's amazing what you can learn in business. <laughs> oh my gosh, everything. Okay, perseverance. Um, you want to face any big challenge, get into business. You know, something <laughs> that's gonna push you to the edge where your mind is like, you know, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get from you know from A to B? Because there is no at times there is no certainty and. Um, no. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so no, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so you're so right. First of all, I didn't even have to pay you to talk about how good accountants were. So that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if my mom's listening, she'll be like, "Yeah, well, you you don't know that because you know." And I mean, um, yeah, my I mean my my mom's an accountant, so you know we always had an accountant in the business, so. Um, now, after going out on my own, um, I never knew what it was like to not have an accountant. Oh, am I still here? Yeah, oh, you're still there. Um, my, um, my daughter's computer's playing up. But yeah, so I never knew what it was like to not have an accountant. So after going through the experience of not having an accountant or not having a good accountant in the business, um, yeah, I would never, ever have... Uh, do business without an accountant very closely yeah. involved <laughs> yeah so important people try to leave it to the last minute or they think oh, I don't need one right now I'll wait till I have my year ends done and and then they come to us and we're like oh yeah should have come to us earlier <laughs> <laughs> exactly we learn. and don't we learn. ever think that the money you spend on your accountant is an expense or it's like oh my gosh if i do it this way i'm gonna save 500 bucks because trust me i learned the hard way that you know it can cost you way more than the fees of your accountant <laughs> yeah. if you don't keep on top of your books and um and make sure all your your taxes and all that is all sorted and yeah. you know accountants also give you just a great peace of mind that that mm -hmm. that side of your business is taken care of and mm -hmm. um, yeah so true Jeez, Jackie, I feel I keep saying this every night. I'm like, oh, I feel like we could keep talking because there's just so much, and I love talking about business, so I could probably talk about it all night. Um, but I'm weary that we've now gone into 40 minutes, so we should probably wrap it up. But honestly, like, I just feel like the whole night you've just dropped gold left, right, and center. Um, John um, is on, and he's also commented that he's learning lots. Um, so. <laughs> Oh, so that's good. cool so yeah so look hey thank you so much Jackie um, great that you can help coach businesses too and help businesses because it means that you can drop lots of um, advice and help for those people out there that are watching that are struggling or thinking about going into business and um, it's really good to hear your stories and the lessons that you've learned from them so that other people can learn and hopefully not make the same mistakes or when they do go oh this is what Jackie was talking about <laughs> yes. oh my gosh and just know that even the best of us even the people that that supposedly know you know business advisors or whatever you want to call us hey you know we're not perfect too and um we're we're, we're um a lot of us go through the struggles as well so but yeah. hey i can only say that it's made me um i feel a much better business advisor because not only um do i know in a rational way what what the challenges are but i've felt it I've experienced yeah. it. I've gone through the emotions, and mm -hmm. that—that's the side that you just—you can only learn through experiencing it. <laughs> what that's okay. like, you know. So yeah, but I just wanted to give a shout out to one person, and and there is another person involved in specific um consultancy, um, and that's my co-director and my sister Luana. Awesome. Um, so she's she's amazing. She's my right hand. Um, and I purposefully um, asked her to become involved in my business last year when I relaunched um, in early 2019. Um, and that was specifically because, you know, I, I, I knew her skills, especially in financial management and accounting. And she's just, I was sharing with you earlier, Wendy, she's just, after my experiences with previous business partners, she's like the right fit, you know, um, for, you know, 
me and her, like, you know, I, after, um, you know, what I've been through in the past, I really wanted to only involve people in my business in terms of ownership um, that I really trusted. And, um, yeah. and I really trust my sister. And like I said, she's got really complimentary um, skills, um, things that, you know, I don't focus on so much. She's really good at, and she just makes, you know, my life as, um, I guess, the face of specific consultancy, um, the person that's out there delivering services, talking to people, she makes, um, she makes the business side so much easier because she does the, the stuff she's really good at is, yeah. um, is the stuff that I'm like, yay, someone else is cooking for <laughs> So I can't, I can't underestimate when you do find the right business partner, yeah. how, how awesome it can be and also how it can help to share the burden and, and relieve a lot of stress. Um, and um, yeah, and I see that um, very much in my friends, Wendy and Ali, they're so <laughs> complimentary <laughs> in life and in business. So yeah. it's not to say that everyone needs to get into business with family because it doesn't work for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and choose wisely as well. <laughs> but um, if, if you do, you know, happen to be blessed enough to have someone in your family or a partner or someone close to you that is complementary to you and is yeah. in the same mindset as you, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Probably mindset and values, I would say, yeah. are the top two in terms of finding a good business partner and then yeah. complementary skills. So that's, yeah. I guess, my closing word for tonight. <laughs> that's cool. And mm -hmm. so true. I think alignment, definitely wanting to head in the same direction, you know, similar goals, definitely similar values, definitely similar mindsets. And then, yeah, like you're saying, if you've got complementary skill sets, someone does something, someone does something else, you're not standing on each other's toes, mm. you can trust that that person is going to do it. And as a business owner, there are so many hats to wear and it is hard for one person to wear them all. So someone else can share those with you um, and take over some of the responsibilities. Then your business, well, what I found with Ali and I is that our business thrives so much better because we've got double the people that are working hard on the business. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. All right, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for such an awesome corridor tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. So much gold to share. And um, yeah, so if anyone is looking for a business consultant, you can hit Jackie up. Are you on Facebook? Uh, yes, yep. Specific consultancy is on Facebook. Otherwise, uh, look you up yeah. on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm mainly on LinkedIn for the business. So yeah. Cool. So hit Jackie up on LinkedIn, search her up. Um, and reach out to if you've got any other questions or you need any other business advice or support um, and Jackie is there to help you. All right, everybody. So tomorrow night, tomorrow, tomorrow I am speaking with um, Yosefa Inari from Pacific Dance New Zealand. Uh, so, yeah, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, if you're interested in how you can take arts and dance into business, then that will definitely be a conversation that you'll want to listen to. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Matiwa. Bye.